Hello Saints, this is Dr. Francis Miles. Welcome to another life-changing service right here on Francis Miles Church Online. Listen, you are about to be treated to some powerful, life-changing, anointed music by Pastors Chris and Anita Dergo so we can worship the Lord together before the ministry of the Word. I will be right back. Don't go nowhere because i got a word that's coming from the Lord right after the worship. Praise God. Not have you in my life to 
Lord, have you in my life? I recognize your beauty and your worth. It far outweighs anything attainable on earth. I recognize your beauty and your worth. It far outweighs anything attainable on earth. I recognize your beauty and your worth. It far outweighs anything attainable on earth. I recognize your beauty and your worth. It far outweighs anything attainable on earth. How I need I just can't afford to not have you in my life, to not have you in my life. How I need you, Lord. I just can't afford to not have you in my life. Not have you in my life Jesus, I need you I don't want to live without you Oh, I need you, I need you, I need you Jesus, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Welcome to another life-changing service, saints, right here on Francis Mouse Church Online. And boy, do I have a word from the Lord for you. So I don't want you to go nowhere, just get engaged until the service is over because God is going to be moving in miracle signs and wonders and in a powerful exp expository revelation from the realm of the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Now listen, if you have not signed up 
on our francismouse.com, francismousechurchonline.com, francismousechurchonline.com. That is our membership website. We designed it to be a mini Facebook. Why? Because I wanted to be able to, in, to, be, to engage our members from around the world. In, on this membership site, you can actually chat, you can pray for each other. It's well, well designed and built, and we built it for you. And I joined there as well to be able to chat with you, communicate with you from around the world. So listen, sign up right now. It's free. Francis Miles, churchonline.com. And then uh, when you're in that membership site, there is a, a, the, the, you're going to find out there's another level of membership, which is one level up, the general membership, where you become a verified member. At the verified member level, you are saying to me, Dr. Miles, I want you to be my pastor. When you go through the online classes, for new the online new members class, when that is said and done, then I'm going to give you a call. Uh, with me or one, of our, or one of our elders will call you, and we are going to pray you to welcome you to the Francis Miles Church Online family officially. Praise God. Now, with that said, I have a very powerful message that I want to bring to you today that has been, that has been in my spirit by the Spirit of God. I want to talk to you about the miracle of waiting on God. The miracle of waiting on God. I believe that our culture is too fast. You know, this is why even the modality of business is following the speed of the culture. That's why in America, you know, fast, foods, um, fast food restaurants like McDonald's, Wendy's, uh, Burger King, you know, Culver's, you, you, you name it. Sonics, they make more money than, not, than, than sit down restaurants. Why? Because people want to eat on the go. We are a very fast culture. So the microwave, the, 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 is, uh, the development of the microwave was to follow that same, you know, desire for speed that is in our culture. Now, while we appreciate the, the, this, uh, this, this, uh, business models, uh, these technological advances, the truth of the matter is sometimes being too fast in the realm of the spirit can kill you because it can cause you to work to go ahead of God. It can cause you to create an Ishmael when God is ready to bring forth your Isaac. So I want to talk about the miracle of waiting on God. And by the way, I'm going to show you that in the New Covenant, waiting on God is not passive. It's not passive. In other words, there's a, lot, there's a whole lot of spiritual activity you can do while you are waiting on God. You can worship God. You can have fun with Jesus. You can have time of intimacy before you have to make that decision because you're waiting on God for that decision. You want to know, should I take the job or not take the job? Should I begin this business? Uh, you know, because there are so many businesses. You want to make sure you are putting your money in the right one. And only God can tell you, son this, or daughter, this business is going to be, is gonna, this is the business that I'm going to prosper you with. Because the last thing you want to do is put your hard earned money in a business. I only to find out months later, years later, it's not the business God intended for your life when your resources, your energy, your money have been wasted. This is why waiting on God, since is powerful. It is powerful. It is needed. And boy, it would avoid so many calamities in life and in ministry. I can tell you, being honest with you, that many of the decisions I regret in my life Happened because I was, I was in a hurry. I was anxious. And I made a decision before waiting on God. So I just want to really bring this to our members and to, to all of you that are watching us right now. About the miracle of waiting on God. There is a wisdom in waiting on God. So I want you to turn in your Bibles on this particular Sunday. Our main anchor passage of scripture comes from the book of a I, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40 and beginning from verse 28. The prophet Isaiah actually begins uh, what we're about to talk about with a question. 
Because I believe questions are important to help us locate ourselves. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is he weary. I said, he's asking questions. Have you not heard? Have you, heard? Have you not heard that the creator of the universe, he neither faints nor is weary. Now, I don't know about you, but that is amazing. Can you, if there is a dimension where God can transfer that energy to you and I, would you not wait for it? Would, not, would you not do whatever it takes for you to be able to share in that grace that is in God himself, that is neither weary nor fainty? Because I'm telling you, I mean, the West, some of the questions I've made, I was tired. I was just exhausted. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of the exhaustion we're having in the body of Christ is because we do not take time to get re-energized, refueled in the Holy Ghost by doing nothing but waiting on God. He says his understanding is unsearchable. And then, then, and, and then he goes on to say, he gives power to the weak. He gives power to the weak. Are you feeling weak this morning? Are you feeling weak that today? I'm here to tell you about a God who gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. That is the dimension in the realm of the spirit. That you can go in and your, and your lack of strength, your lack of strength will be turned into a positive. He, he, he says he gives might. He increases strength. He says even the youth, the young ones, the youth shall faint and be weary. See, this is a reference to natural energy. The energy of youth. I mean, I mean, I remember the things I used to do when I was 20 that I have to think about doing them now. You know, precious memories. But, they, but my body, my mind may be there, but my body, I'm realizing, is not where my, it was 25 years ago. But the Bible says even the energy of youth can come, can bring you into exhaustion. It says the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fail. The young men, studs, shall utterly fail. But, now this is where I want, to, I, want to, I want to spend my time. But those who wait on the Lord, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So right there we see that waiting on the Lord, my God, affects you on several levels. And we're going to deal with every level that waiting on God brings into your life. The miracle, that's why I call it the miracle of waiting on God. Just waiting on God can, can release miracles into your life. It can change everything. You know, one of my favorite songs today is a song by the new, this new amazing singing group, Maverick. And it's called Our Wait. Our Wait. And it's a very powerful song, but it really connects with this idea, you know, that I can do it. I can do, we can do a lot of things. If we can just find a way to discipline ourselves that in the business of our life, the fast pace of the 21st century, and we don't get lost in it and, and we were able to pull ourselves out of the matrix and just plug into God. You know, I have no other agenda. Shut down the phone and just say, God, I'm choosing you now. I just want to wait on the Lord. Because you never know what he might tell you in the time of waiting on the Lord. Maybe, maybe you are spinning plates right now. Maybe if you just waited on God, God might give you a word of knowledge that will completely make all the spinning of plates unnecessary because with one word of knowledge from the Lord in the place of waiting, God was able to solve the dilemma your business is facing or your career is facing. That is the miracle of waiting on God. He says, now here's what he tells us, several things about, about waiting on God. He says, but those who wait on the Lord, number one, they shall renew their strength. Man, I'm telling you, strength is important. If you're, not, if you're weak, I'm telling you, strength is important. I mean, I mean, I tell you, 
It's difficult to preach a great message when you're exhausted. It is difficult to think properly when you're exhausted. Strength is important to the human body because everything is energy. The, uh, strength here is referencing to energy. They that re wait on the Lord shall renew their energy. You know, scientists are now discovering that the body is a machine of energy. This body is driven by energy. And, it, and, and some of you right now who are watching me right now, you know what I'm talking about because you, you don't have the energy to do anything right now. You feel zapped. You know, your job has taken a lot out of you and left you with no energy. But can I submit to you today that if you take the time to wait on the Lord, to wait on the Lord, God promises that he's going to renew your strength. He will give you a new dose of energy. B12 is not cutting it, my friend. Thank God for B12. And those are things. But I'm telling you, between B12 and Holy Ghost power, I choose Holy Ghost power all the time. He will, renew, he will renew their strength. Where do you think the strength of Samson came from? How does a man like Samson pull a gate like, as, if it is, as if he's lifting, lifting a bag of popcorns? God is powerful. God has strength. And many of you right now, you need strength. You need strength. And I'm, I prophesy by the Spirit of God at what I'm teaching on the miracle of waiting on God that the Spirit of God is invading your body right now and, re, and, re, yeah, and, and giving you a fresh charge. See, the body is like batteries. After a while, it will stop working if you don't recharge. God designed the body. God never designed the body to keep going and keep going and keep going without going back to the one who created it so he can supercharge every aspect of your being, your organs, your lungs, your, your kidneys. God can supercharge everything he created because why? He gave them to you for a reason. Nobody understands the importance of the kidney than the one who came up with the idea that your body needs a kidney. Nobody, nobody, no child comes into this world and begins to say, hey, begins to, to vote on what all Organs, what organs are, are going to be in their body or not. No, every child that is born, if they're born healthy, has lungs, they have kidneys, they have all different type of systems given to them by a master creator who understands the engine of your body. And at some point, that vehicle called your body, that is a vehicle your spirit is driving into destiny. You lose your body, forget about your spirit assignment. It's going back to the God who gave it. You know, that's why premature death happens. You keep going going and going and going. At some point, you need to recharge. You see, my life is a busy life. Right now, I'm in a season of my life where, my God, engagements, everybody wants a little bit of, a little bit of Francis Miles. I appreciate it. I thank God they want to hear what God has to say through me. But here's what they don't, what, 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 what they, the people do not fully appreciate. I only have one body. And when that body gets really tired, if I don't pull back and go and recharge, and allow the God who created the body to charge it up in a time where I do nothing. I'm not thinking about the next engagement. I'm not thinking about the next sermon. I'm just saying, God, I just want to be in your presence because I'm just thankful you gave me life. I'm telling you there's something about God doing that that recharges the body and gives you more energy. They that wait on the Lord. Stop being so busy. Wait. On the Lord, if you're getting cranky, that's a that's a sign. See, crankiness is a you know you know some you know crankiness is a sign. Sometimes your family members will tell you you're getting cranky now. Whenever you find when I whenever I find myself getting cranky, or my wife is getting cranky, I say, Camilla, go to the altar. You and Jesus have some time. Get some time together. You know, and usually enough, when she goes, I go. An hour, two hours, the crankiness is gone. Why? Because there's a fresh charge. <laughs> There's a fresh charge from the only one who can charge the body. No, but I'm telling you, you cannot let the vitamins do the work of Jesus. He won't let you. He won't, the Lord will not let you replace him with vitamins. Trust me, he will not. And you don't want to do that anyway. You want to wait on the Lord. You know? But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And then it begins, to go, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. For, so, so now waiting on the Lord, in other words, waiting on the Lord brings about 
the ability for you to begin, that, the, the begin to, re, to rise in stature. It begin to rise in stature. Because you see, uh, 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 the, 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 when I think of the ego, I mean, uh, when I think of all the creatures God made, the ego is different. You know, when an, when an ego want to supercharge itself or, 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 or um, give itself a rebirth, you know what the ego does? It, it rises as far as it can get to the sun to recharge. My God, it rises. It, 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 God, why does God compare himself to the ego? Even among the faces of Jesus, one of the faces of the Son of God in the Gospels is the face of the ego. Why is the ego important? Because God chose that creature to teach us something about himself. When the ego wants to supercharge, you know what it does? It rises. It rises and rises. I mean, it and looks into the it looks straight into the brilliance of the sun. Something happens. God designed it, which means God designed the ego in such a way that the ego is designed, that is, is designed by God, like no other creature, that the closer it gets to the sun, the better it feels. Ha. The closer it gets to the S-U-N, the better it feels. But guess, but, but guess what? You and I were designed just like the ego. The closer we get to the sun, to the S-O-N, and look into his eyes and let his glory radiate right through our eyes, through our bodies, something supernatural happens. We begin to find out that the, the ability for flight happens in our lives. And we can you know it. Flight means we can get to our destiny much faster than if than if we're just walking. How many know that you can get, there are several ways to get to Chicago. You can go by, you, you can go by train, you can go by car, or you can go by air. Trust me, of those three realms of transport, one will get you there faster. That is what waiting on the Lord is. It allows you and I to mount up with wings as though we were eagles. Glory to God. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I hope that it is you. And that you are hearing a word from the Lord. You know, you may need to look at your calendar and God's going to point your calendar and say, hey, you are too busy. You know, you know, you need to be deliberate about scheduling times of waiting on the Lord. If waiting on the Lord is this important, if it's this life transforming, then it ought to be scheduled. Because everything important in your life, you schedule. The people you're about to say tomorrow, you schedule them. Okay? Let's begin to schedule, schedule moments of encounter where you can wait on the Lord. They shall run and not be weary. They shall not run and not be weary. My God, hallelujah. You know, so now, now this speaks of the spirit of acceleration concerning your destiny here on the earth. They shall run. Your projects on the earth are going to happen faster. They're going to happen faster because running is something you do with your feet touching the ground. You know, and so, you, you, all of a sudden, God is going to begin to accelerate uh, your earthly projects, your earthly assignments, and, and you're going to be able to accomplish them at, at the faster speeds, you know, without becoming weary. Why? Because the energy you are burning is not yours. It is coming from the Holy One of Israel. It's coming from God that you are burning, you know? I tell you, it's, it's, it's an amazing place to be. You know, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The believers walk of faith. Now the walk has to do with faith. Every time the Bible talks about walk, it talks about the ability to walk by faith because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. The reason why some of you are not walking by faith, you're too tired to walk by faith. I'll never forget one time I was doing a meeting in Chicago with Tim Story and Mike Murdoch. And, Mike, and, and, and Dr. Mike Murdoch made a very powerful statement. He said, when fatigue walks in, faith walks out. It was a wisdom key he was giving us. He says, when fatigue walks in, faith walks out. Man, and he said, and then he went on to talk about, he said, some of the most stupidest, stupidest things some of my friends have done that either cost them their ministry you know, cost them their reputation or, or cost them a, a lot of money. He says they happened when they were fatigued. He says, when, he says they have noticed this again and again, that when fatigue sets in, usually faith works out. Wow. I'm telling you, that's why no wonder the devil wants you to, wants you to be so fatigued. Because then he knows that you're gonna, your faith will be compromised. Your faith will be compromised. 
And I want to tell you something today. That many of you right now, you are suffering the consequences of a decision you made. You did not make it by faith. You made it because you were tired. You were exhausted. So you did not make a faith decision. You made a natural decision. And that natural decision is now costing you a whole lot. The goodness is, whenever it comes to Jesus, whenever it comes to God, it's never too late. It's never too late to turn the ship around. It's never too late for you to say, you know what? I'm going to have to disappoint some people because I'm, have to, I'm going to have to cancel some meetings because I need to become deliberate about waiting on God. I cannot keep on this way. Listen, friend, you cannot, listen, I know you're trying to make a living, but boy, you can work three, four jobs, listen, and don't have time for God. I'm telling you, you are playing with fire. That body was designed by God who's telling you, you better bring that body back to me from time to time so I can supercharge it. Why? I am the manufacturer. Dr. Miles Mano used to say this, that you need to understand that every manufacturer, when they manufacture a product, they give you a Bible that runs the product. You call it a manual. A product manual. You know what a product manual is? It tells you the parameters of the product, where you can use it, how far you can stretch it before you touch, you enter the realm of abuse. Abuse is using a product beyond the parameters of the manufacturer. You don't own the body, neither do I. Our body were given to us by God, literally. You know, and, and, and most interesting, if you're a believer, Jesus even paid the price. The Bible says he purchased your body. It's been bought with a price, the book of Corinthians says. And therefore, the Bible is the product manual of what, how your body can be, how far your body can be stretched, what you can do with it, what you're not allowed to do with it. Well, the one who made the body tells you, you better stop. You better come to times when you are deliberate about stopping and say, God, I don't care if I'm just going to lie for hours in the altar while we may put on some worship music, talk to the Lord. You know what? I would rather you slept in front of the altar. You know? If you're exhausted, you know, there are times I don't even, I'm so exhausted, I don't even know, I don't even know what to say. God said, just come out the altar. So in, the world, I have the altar in my home. I hope you have yours, by the way, in your house. If you don't have, build an altar in your house. So we have, we brought this very nice, cushy pallet that's in front of the altar in the house of the Lord that we have built. And there's, I'm telling you, there are times I just go in or Camilla is in there and I can hear snoring in there or I'm, I'm in there. But you know what? By the time we come out, it's more powerful sleeping at the altar than it is on our bed. Now, I'm telling you because our bed is our bed. The altar is connected to God. It's a place of where we wait on the Lord. It's saturated with times when we cry to God, we worship God, we, we, we quote the scripture, we study the Bible in there. So an atmosphere has been created. Listen, my friend, you need to become deliberate about scheduling your time with God. You need to wait on the Lord. There are miracles waiting for you on the other side of your waiting. There are miracles, signs, and wonders God wants to release in your life on the, way, on the other side of the waiting. There are some of you who are facing massive decisions that, that must be made. But, and I'm telling you, you, God says you absolutely will not, cannot make that decision until you can authenticate what you're about to do from a season or a time of being deliberate, being serious about waiting on the Lord. Again, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May that be your portion in the mighty name of Yeshua Jesus. Now listen, before we close our service today, I want to give you an opportunity to worship Jesus in your tithes and your offerings. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. But most importantly, you never want to come to the altar of God empty-handed because a seed of nothing produces nothing. So I, uh, so I want to challenge you right now to, ask the, to, to just uh, ask the Lord, Lord, what would you like me to worship you with this morning? This service. On the screen, you can see the different ways you can tithe or give a seed 
to Francis Miles Church Online. If it's a tithe, make sure you, you acknowledge it. You're in the comment section of the giving. You let us know it's a tithe because we call tithers and we pray over the tithe. And also first fruit, we also do that. But I pray over every seed that comes into the ministry. Because I believe that your seed is important to God and it's important to you. Because your seed is calling for something in your future that you need now in order to change the quality of your life. So I want you now to get ready to worship God. Because remember, giving is an act of worship. Do you know that the word worship was reserved until God found a man who was willing to give him his only begotten son as an offering on Mount Moriah? It was Abraham who introduced us to the word worship. When, the servants, uh, when he told the servants, me and the lad are going to go up to the mountain and worship God. Wow, this was a time of extreme sacrifice. God, why was he there? To give up his only begotten son because God asked him to. It is impossible to be a worshiper and not be a giver. Because worship begets giving. So let's give to the Lord and believe God for miracles in our lives as we connect to this anointing, as we connect to God in worship, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, you might be watching us for the very first time you might, and, and if you're not born again, I want to ask you the question. If you died right now, would, you, would, hell, would, hell, would hell be your destination? Or Jesus, would heaven be your destination? Have you received the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? The good news is if you have not, he loves you and he died for you. 1989 was the time I ran to the altar and I, my life will never be the same again. Today could be your day. So whatever you are, before we close this service today, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I realize that you died that I, may, that I may be resurrected to a new life. You shed your blood that I may be forgiven of the sin of Adam, the original sin. Heavenly Father, right now I receive Jesus as your offering of salvation. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come into my heart and change me and make me a child of God and take away the desire to sin and give me the desire for righteousness. If you pray that prayer, you are now a child of God. You are, you are born again. You have come into the kingdom. God is your father now. We want to help you in your newfound faith in Jesus. Please let, write us at testify at francismouse.com testify at francismouse.com Tell me in the testimony if this is your, is, is tell me, I'm just, I just got born again watching you. Because we would like to send you some materials. We would like to, to call you, uh, talk to you, and then do something to help you in your newfound faith in Yeshua Jesus. Thank you so much for watching for this life-changing Sunday service here at Francis Mount Church Online. Until next Sunday, this is Dr. Mount saying, Shalom, Shalom, in Jesus' mother name. Amen.